This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. Welcome back, Jonathan Clark. We are in the studio with a, uh, well, a, a really incredible uh, singer, songwriter, uh, guitar player, and sometimes bassist, I guess now. Uh, the band is uh, Foles, and their new album, Everything Not Saved Will Be Lost, part one, coming out March 8th. Part two of that album, coming out this fall, and they are playing three shows at Brooklyn Steel, April 12th, 13th, and 14th, all the tour dates at Foles.com. Oh, wait, Foles.co.uk. Yeah, .co.uk. Ah, yes. So we are with lead singer, uh, lead guitarist, and songwriter, uh, Giannis Filipakis. How are you, man? Good to see you again. I'm good, yeah, good to see you. So three shows at Brooklyn Steel. Why don't you just play one at the Garden? Or one at Barclays Center or something like that. I don't know. Um, I've heard it's a great venue. Oh, it is. Yeah, Yeah, I've I've seen shows there. Um, Congrats on making an excellent new album. A lot of work for you, right? Like 18 months or so doing this? Yeah, it was a lot of work. Yeah. Um, And we didn't really, we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into when we first started because we... You know, we finished touring what went down and then we had a nice healthy break and we kind of like replenished the white blood cells and the liver got a rest. <laughs> and then um, and then we, we tentatively started making music again. And in the interim, our bass player moved to France and left the band. So and that uh, was amicable though, right? Like Yeah, totally amicable. I mean, it was sad. Did you he know, get but, sick of the grind? Like what happened? Right? Yeah, he's just at a different stage in his life. And I think that he had, he had different things he wanted to do. And none of us envisaged when we started the band that we'd be doing it a decade later or whatever. So for him, I think he, he was like, you know, my life is is so wrapped up into the band and he had other things he wanted to do. And he had, a, he had kids. And so it was, and we were touring a lot, you know, I think that it's um, it's not, it can grind people down in different ways. So, um, we were just talking about that on the way up, and I can imagine how that is. If your wife is looking at you and you're about to say, "I'm yeah, I'll see you in about nine months," yeah, and maybe your kids are crying, and yeah, yeah. you know, I can almost relate to that, really. You yeah, know? and you know, he wanted to live in the mountains, basically, like he he wants to be in the mountains. So um, that's what he's done. So, but it was totally amicable, and it, it meant that we approached this record in a different way. Um, so we went rather than, you know, before on the other records, we would go to a, a small, uh, writing room in Oxford and we would just bash stuff out and jam and, and, and figure it out like that. So, but on this one, we had to approach it differently, which is what led to us having so much material and being in the studio for 18 months. Um, so we started recording on day one. We basically had tape rolling the whole time in a way that is quite, I think it's pretty unusual these days to approach it that way. Um, and it, yeah, it made for a lot of work, particularly without a producer. Partly, I don't think a producer would, no same producer would give their lives over to work with us for 18, <laughs> 18 months. 18 months is a long have, time. Yeah, yeah, having to sift through all the sediment. Yeah, um, yeah, right. So I had to do that. But uh, Is Walter good. on any of the new album? No. Or the, oh, he's not, okay. Yeah, so he, he we when we started the record, we, 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 uh, we started it as a four-piece. Yeah. So... Back in the day, bands, as you probably know this, they would release double albums and sometimes triple albums. And these days, a lot of bands will release, say, like an EP, and then six or seven months later release another EP. But these are two full albums, they're right? They're two full albums, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they both will come in at about 45 minutes. There's 10 tracks each. Um, you know, in the, in the latter stages of being in the studio, we... we for a while, we didn't know that we were going to complete all the ideas we're working on. So we... we didn't broach the subject that much about h- how eventually the the music would be delivered to the world, you know. Um, but once we realized we had 20 songs, then we were discussing it and we we felt that there were symmetries. We felt that there we had two opening tracks and two closing tracks and that generally the material fell into two pools of they they had there were two kind of te- characteristics. Um, and then we got pretty excited about the idea of doing it this way. So we we relished the challenge of sequencing an album so that it had it well, two albums that have their own individual arc, you know, and they've got their own journey, but then they relate to each other, and the artwork can relate to itself. And um, it's just a it's just a richer project for it. Um, I've listened to part one probably like four times now. Uh, it is so good. Uh, and and part one is. And I'm getting this, and I've read some things where it's sort of like your observation of the world, both politically, environmentally, thematically. As a songwriter, I guess you have to take inspiration from the things that are going around you in your world, as well as other people's worlds around the world, right? I mean, 
Yeah, I think that, you know, I felt like the themes on this record lyrically were knocking on the door. Um, and it was just a question of letting them in. I didn't, it didn't, this this record lyrically for me, I didn't feel like I had to travel very far from myself at all. There wasn't big imaginative leaps in terms of, oh, what should, you know, I felt like everything, everything was there was ripe for writing lyrics about. And I think it's, and I think more now than ever before, like we're in the same boat globally and we're so connected in so many ways that whatever's resonating with me is likely to be resonating with you. Um, and I thought that that was quite, um, once I'd kind of f felt that that was the path to follow on the lyrics then everything had it, ha everything had a compass to it. Cause I knew like, okay, these are the themes that the record should orbit around. And these themes are going to be directly relatable to the outside world. Cause it's, we're all, we're all preoccupied by the same problems at the moment. So I think it's the most um, relatable record we've made in many ways. It's the one that communicates easiest to the outside world. Well, we, we live in the States here and we all know what happened in November of 2016. It's now 2019. It's very confusing to an American to figure out what is going on in England. It's difficult as a Brit to figure out what's going on in, in Britain as well. Like, what's the next step? I don't... No one... I mean, I, I think actually no one knows. <clears throat> there are, you know... And certainly I don't know. Like, even the people that are men and know don't know. So um, you have political like analysts and stuff in the UK, and it's like they get on these news shows and it's just gibberish. Pundits, no one's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pundits, yeah. Yeah, but no, but it's like, it's, it's, it's farcical. It's almost like a satire, like how how flummoxed everybody is. And I think this is a kind of, I think there's a, this is happening in many ways in different countries. There's this kind of like this feeling of political or just, in, it's not, it's broader than politics. It's just like confusion. And the world doesn't make sense in a way that it, we felt that it used to. The world used to, used to have cause and effect. You know, something would happen and there would be a kind of definable consequence of it and what the, the strange thing that feels like is going around now it's in the water everywhere is like that that the rational repercussions of things don't seem to follow and i think that's true here i think it's true in the uk um and it's kind of a unique time i think it's also like we're uniquely fearful of the future in a way that i don't think that our predecessors were i don't think our parents generations were they, they, they used to be an optimism about the future. Things will get better. Technology will make our lives better. And there's this kind of overpowering anxiety about how we're past the good days and that the future's like this big black pulsing question mark. Does it ever make you want to live somewhere else? But wh where would, where would you, what, like on a different planet? <laughs> Or like, you know, Scandinavia or something. Yeah, but, you know? the, but Scandinavia's got its own problems, namely the weather being the right, first Right, yeah, one. that is but, a big problem. But uh, I mean, I definitely feel like this desire to take refuge and like want to evade the, these themes is definitely, it's there in the album. It's, it's that like I go to Greece a lot and I try to, you know, and also the process of making an album of the whole tiny, you know, locking yourself away in the studio is one of, get, of, of trying to make something beautiful out of, out of the nastiness outside. Right. Well, you've done that with this album, absolutely. Um, I saw a cool photo you posted on Instagram. It was a studio, and there were many, many keyboards yeah. uh, posted there, which uh, I really enjoyed. There are moments here on part one with keyboards and beats you have created that are that are somewhat new wave-ish, mm -hmm. somewhat, um, you know, I was reminded of, say, some Depeche Mode and New Order and Kraftwerk yeah. and things like that. Did that just happen organically or was it things that have just been circling in your brain for a while or riffs and yeah I think um it, yeah it happened organically <clears throat> and it's largely just that I think by using the studio as an instrument and not being as reliant on um guitars in the room it meant that we you know we'd have a like a, a an idea like a hook or a melody idea and it's you know in the live room we'd do that on a guitar and this time yeah the guitar be, riffs are on this album I mean they're there there are yeah, yeah. But but we also we had the freedom to be like let's try that on a synth and so I th and I think that for us it's a newer texture to to put to the f you know we've always had synths in the records but I think we've emphasised it a bit more in this first record and it, it just makes it a bit fresher um, on the new album I love the songs in degrees um, on the Luna Sunday sounds like one of those um, 
lighters in the air or like flashlight app phone things in the air for a live concert have you played any of these songs yet out live no uh no we've not played any of them now <clears throat> but I, i'm really excited about taking it on the road i think that, that it's going to translate well yeah i think so too um the first single is exit it's a really wild video for that song too it's I was reminded of like parts Black Mirror, Game of Thrones, Mission Impossible. Yeah, Black Mirror definitely that. Yeah, yeah. where did you guys shoot that? So we shot it in Budapest. Ah. Um, so that's we got these crazy locations, um, and the director was like spent. I mean, he spent like three weeks, four weeks out there, uh, and we only, we only shot for like five. We shot for quite a few days for a music video. We shot for like four or five days. Um, but yeah, I, I just explained the song to him, and I said like the song's about you know, this and that. And um, and then he, he kind of took it and ran with it. It definitely looks like a movie. Almost, yeah, yeah I feel know? like it's like a, the trailer for a movie backwards or something. Okay, I'm going to play you some video, which I think you've probably seen before. Yeah. Yeah. You do this a lot at your concerts. You 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 find a balcony or something yeah. and you jump off Anything it. Anything to hand, yeah. Any So... Have you always trusted complete strangers to, no. to catch you? Like no, no, it's something that evolved. You know, like uh, I didn't used to do that sort of that sort of uh, stuff. Insanity. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, largely, it's just like the shows got more and more intense. You know, over the years, and like, yeah, we just get we get worked up, right? Yeah. And it just feels like the logical climax is yeah. to to break break the fourth wall but also put put yourself at the mercy of the, I don't know it, it just feels like the right I, I can't explain it to you because it's not necessarily the person who's talking to you now that does it well it's a different person on stage probably, yeah right and yeah. like but I just I like the, I like shows that are that are ecstatic and where you feel like it's what I like wild shows I'm not interested in choreographed polite pristine shows I want shows that are dirty and that feel like they can go out of control and so when we're on stage, that's just how it goes. When you first started doing it, did you have a spinal tap moment where you jumped into a crowd and then you landed on a floor? I've hurt, yeah, I've hurt myself. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Not, not nothing too bad, but I've bust, <clears throat> I bust my feet up in different ways, oh, and man. Um, yeah, I. Uh, Be careful, please. Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, <laughs> I'm more worried about the fans some, a lot of the time. Well, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because also I'm not as light as I used to be. <laughs> Giannis is with us from Falls, the fantastic new album, Everything Not Saved Will Be Lost, uh, part one coming out March 8th. Part two of that album is coming out uh, this fall, and the band playing at Brooklyn Steel April 12th, 13th, and 14th. Uh, what can you tell us more about the song Exits, and then we'll play it? So the song is basically, a, we wanted to write a song that was like, a, had a chugging groove, is the way we would describe it. And we'd been listening to a lot of Talk Talk at the time. There's a particular track called Life's What You Make It. And we just experimented with a lot of synths. And the lyrics are about building a weird underground world, like a kind of ant um, nest, MC Escher type vibe where we can all go live. And it's, um, I just added like a visual picture of this kind of alternate reality where we lived underground. Westworld. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and the song is just is to do with that. And um, I struggled with the bass line almost up until the last day in the studio. We kept I kept fiddling with the bass line. I wasn't comfortable with it. And then uh, I I did it on a piano, um, and that's why the bass sound has got that chugging depth to it. Well, speaking of bass, will you be playing bass in the live shows at all? No, I won't. No. Oh, okay. No, we've got a, we've got a guy, we've got a mate joining to do all the bass duties, but. Um, I played a lot of bass on the album. Right, yeah, I read that. Well, his name is Giannis. The band, of course, is Foles. Uh, everyone go out or pre-order, I guess, the new album, Everything Not Saved Will Be Lost, part one coming out March 8th, and part two of the album coming out this fall, and they will be at Brooklyn Steel April 12th, 13th, and 14th. All the tour dates, foles.co.uk. Giannis, thank you so much. Thank you. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.